there's a consistent theme, whether it's you know in India or it's in the United States or it's Singapore, people want efficient solutions to their problems. They want cost-effective solutions to their problems. And those problems might be different based on the region. Um, but the nice thing about our product line and about, about our team is we can provide the, the, the solutions can be, can be, or FR3 can be one part of that solution. The problems are different, but they're, they're, there's a consistent theme across the globe about the electrification. If it's in the U.S., it's more about, there's some growth, but it's also about how do we fix the grid long term, or how do we make it more reliable long term. If I'm in India, it's, it's reliability, but it's about growth as well. If we're in Brazil, uh, they've got the World Cup and the, uh, and the Olympics coming up, so how do they deal with that? And, and electricity is a, you know, is a big part of that. And, you know, the grid and, and how we play in as dielectric fluids is, is a small piece of that. We feel that our product line provides a solution to some of the issues that they're going at, that they have on a regular basis. One of the first things I would say is that we, we really have a great team here that knows more about dielectric fluids than I think than anybody else in the world, be it synthetics, be it natural esters, be it uh, mineral even. And so that we've got a broad um, uh, breadth of knowledge and a lot of horsepower here in terms of you know, technology and commercial activity and that kind of thing. Cargill has great people around the world that are interested in new things and new ideas and bring a different perspective to things. They're always thinking about how to provide a solution to their customers. That's part of the key to our business and how we can compete against regional people is we can provide a, a global solution both from an operations standpoint, from a regulatory standpoint, environmental, um, you know, even marketing and that kind of thing. Um, and provide a solution on a global basis. And, and, and really no one else in this space can do that. This is about how, how customer focused we really are on a day-to-day -day basis. And we are always thinking about uh, what value we can bring to that customer. You know, how can we make that customer succeed and do better and make them look like heroes. And, and, and by extension, we do well as well. You know, the other part of Cargill is um, because of what we are in terms of a private business, we can take a long-term uh, vision of things. And so we, you know, we don't, you know, we don't have to necessarily um, do things that are best for the next quarter, but not necessarily good for the next year or two years or five years. And so we take a longer term approach to things. And what we need to understand are the real, real issues that, that these utilities are going through every day. Again, the first thing that we want to do is not tell them why. I want to ask them, what needs do you have? I mean, what, 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 are, you, what are your hot buttons? What keeps you up at night? We've got a lot of the in-house um, technical knowledge on product lines and how they work. But it, it's more about how that interaction happens with the customer that's really the magic there. And so we have to have the touch with both ends of this to pull it all together to bring the value and, 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 the, and the right solution to both the OEM and to the end use customer. So we do it in a lot of different uh, industrial spaces within our business and we're doing it in this space as well. As an example, you know, do people actually have the engineers on staff to look at new products? Do people, or are they outsourcing that to the OEMs? And by extension, are the OEMs outsourcing that to their suppliers? We see a lot of that. So we can, we can help in that respect as a collaborative partner. Do we see, um, you know, things like uh, regulations, environmental regulations, and other regulatory things are happening that are very complex. There's a lot of things that I think we can take off of the, their plates and have responsibility for and provide value to, their, to, to them on a long-term basis. Where we bring value is, uh, where you can design not only transformers, but systems like substations and things like that using the product qualities of a, of a natural ester. And so as an example, if we use you know, the new standards that are coming out with high temperature, being able to you know, raise the temperature that you can run that transformer so you can make it smaller, more efficient, use less materials, where we can get cl close to the cost or even lower than the cost of a mineral transformer. That's the first step. And then a second step is, okay, how do we make that substation uh, where we don't have to put in deluge systems, where we don't have to put in firewalls, where we don't have to put in, you know, concrete, uh, you know, so that we, you know, you can, you can contain spills and things like that. Then you start talking about a total cost of ownership where, you know, it's probably much less expensive to have a natural ester solution than it is to have a mineral solution. And so, really, it's about how are we, what, what are the values that that utility puts on things like total cost of ownership, and then how do we look at it as a as a as a total solution for you versus okay the, the mineral oil versus the dielectric fluid 
you know, natural extra fluid. Uh, there, there's where we want to have the conversation. You know, we've got to look at it from a total cost perspective, and that, that's a conversation I'd love to have with any utility or any end user.